From our studios at the corner of 8th and Walton in Bentonville, Arkansas, welcome to Saturday Morning Meeting, brought to you in part by Dun & Bradstreet Credibility Corp. Saturday Morning Meeting covers Walmart, Sam's Club, and the consumer product companies that are represented on the racks and shelves throughout the country and around the world. I'm Derek Ridenauer, and our focus is on the insights, trends, and best practices to help you as a supplier grow your business with the world's largest retailer. Thank you for joining us and coming up today, I'll be talking with Matt Pfeiffer from Store of the Community and reviewing this week's top news stories with me are Tom Muccio and Ross Culley. But first, the headlines. January 24th, Sam's Club announced plans to lay off 2,300 workers. CNN Money reports that just under half of these layoffs are the result of a restructuring of grocery departments. Right now, the fresh sections have six managers. That number is being slashed to three. Sam's Club is encouraging associates and managers who are losing their jobs to apply for positions within the company. At the U.S. Conference of Mayors, Walmart announced that over the next five years, it will invest $10 million in a fund intended to support product and manufacturing innovation in the United States. The funds will, will provide grants to manufacturing leaders who work to expand and improve U.S. manufacturing and as part of Walmart's long-term strategy of sourcing more domestically produced goods. Reuters reports that Walmart will be stepping up its supplier compliance process in China following criticisms from China Central Television about lax standards. Walmart China plans to expand its documentation requirements while also providing a computerized system to assist suppliers in their own compliance efforts. Arkansas Business reports that despite the recent data leak at Target stores, most consumers aren't taking any special precautions to secure their financial information while shopping. A recent Associated Press poll found that while consumers are concerned about data protection, relatively few have taken specific actions, such as paying with cash instead of credit cards or checking their credit reports to protect themselves. The standoff between Walmart and Alaska's fisheries has come to an end. The Walmart Green Room states that Walmart has reviewed the Responsible Fisheries Management Program and has deemed it as an acceptable program for governing the sustainable sourcing of fish and seafood. Walmart and Alaska's fishing industry had been at odds over the decision by Alaskan fisheries to drop certification by the Marine Stewardship Council. And finally, both Walmart and Target shoppers have the opportunity to watch the Super Bowl in style this year. Morning News USA reports that both retailers offer deals on home entertainment electronics, including televisions, Blu-ray players, and accessories. Check out Walmart and Supplier News as is reported on walmartnewsnow.com. And we're joined now by our panel, Tom Muccio, retired from Procter & Gamble after 10 years, and Ross Cully. Uh, partner at the Harvest Group. Guys, thank you. The big news that uh, came out this week is that Sam's Club was laying off 2,300 associates. Now, really, in, this, in the grander scheme of things, probably not that significant. Obviously, it's very unfortunate when anyone loses their job. But, Ross, what is your take on this? Is this was this really newsworthy? Yeah, I think it was a little bit unfair, the negative press that it got. I mean, all companies are looking to streamline. Um, to me, the big takeaway from a supplier at Walmart was the way that they did it. They reduce their management based on club size performance in terms of sales. And so if I'm a supplier, the, the lesson I take from this story is I can't manage my business on the average. Um, every club, every store is not created equal. And so just like they're looking to, to pare back labor based on sales rates, I need to spend my resources and my time based on sales rates as well. And look at what's what's different about those unique clubs. Yeah, and look absolutely. at each club as its independent business. I think the other thing is is from a training standpoint, um, there's going to be people in those clubs that are going to get additional uh, responsibility. And so I think from a Sam's Club standpoint, um, they'll be able to raise those people up, and there'll probably be some promotions in the years to come. Tom, yeah, for me, it's a real hot button. Uh, you know, when you had a company with with two million uh, associates, and they're doing what any good business would do with 2,300. They're doing it in the right way, and that hits the headlines. Instead of talking about the, the jobs they're providing for the vets, the jobs they're providing for right. a handicap, the opportunity for people to move up um, in their organization uh, with promotions. Uh, you know, they, they get hammered for minimum wage jobs when their average wage is more like 11 to $12. Uh, and those entry-level jobs, that's how you learn and you have the chance to move up in a company that's uh, that's like that. And well, Doug McMill, <clears throat> CEO now, absolutely will be in uh, the next week. That's where he started. Yeah, well, exactly. And you know, if you're if you're going to give a balanced press, why don't they talk about uh, things like uh, uh, you know the gap between uh, the this wealth gap? If you take a look at Doug's new salary versus the average employee, is more like fifty to one versus right. the U.S. average of three fifty to one and any other incentives that he has 
uh, or any other compensation that he gets over and above his salary is is either incentive based or results based. So how can you argue about that? Because the shareholders and the rest of the company wins if he gets it. Now, and layoffs in January in retail aren't really that uncommon. I think that happens every yeah, year. Hire I mean, for I was Christmas. Yeah. yeah, you hire up for Christmas. Yeah, I think another thing would be interesting is, is is all this savings. I mean, we 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 see that there's execution issues. That there's been talk of labor being reduced, but. Um, when they when they pair these middle management jobs, are they actually going to reinvest it in some execution jobs and in, increase OSA? It'd be interesting to watch. Yeah, and if you, I don't know how many new jobs they created last year, but I bet you it was a big multiple of 2,300. Well, and they, they went in, in November. They announced they were going to hire 55,000 people. They were going to promote them, and so if you just promoted 55,000 people and now you're doing 2,300 cuts, that's yeah, I mean, and most of those, you know, probably won't be cut. So those will be people, if they're good people and performing, they'll try to find them another job within Walmart or in another club or whatever. They're not going to lose good people that are that are contributors if they can help it. Just simply reallocating Absolutely. their resources and putting them where they really need them, which are those higher performing clubs, cutting out some of the fat in the Absolutely. underperforming clubs. Absolutely. All right, let's move on to the next, the next story that made news this week, the U.S. Conference of Mayors. Uh, got together with Walmart. They're going to be really pushing more Made in America jobs, similar to what they, they announced last year, the $50 billion over, over the next 10 years. Tom, I want to come back to you on this one. What's your take on this story? Well, I, I think this is, this is terrific. And uh, uh, if you look at the numbers from 1980 till today, we, in 1980 we had 20,000 uh, manufacturing jobs. Today we have 10,000. Uh, and there's 13, or excuse me, a million. There, there were uh, 20 million jobs, uh, okay. and now there are 10 million. So we've lost 10 million jobs in that time frame. If you look at that and compare it versus unemployment, where there's 13 million unemployed today, I mean, this is a big deal. If we can restore manufacturing jobs, uh, and those manufacturing jobs is a knock-on effect because they're going to be buying raw materials and other things from other U.S. suppliers. So this is a, it's a big, bold, and very good uh, move for the United States, in my view. Yeah, awesome. I agree. It's a great move by Walmart. And if I'm a supplier, I'm looking to leverage this as a first mover advantage. Um, you're looking at the ROI versus your cost overseas. But I think the other win for Walmart that, that can get lost here is, is those manufacturing jobs. A lot of those people are going to turn around and spend those paychecks at Walmart. And, uh, and as they look at their core customer being under pressure, bringing those jobs back should help sales. Well, if you're a mayor, that's obviously what you want too. Is those this, because mayors are funded mostly by sales tax. This is going to come back to their own communities. Plus, you have a housing spur that goes along with this. So it's kind of a win-win for everybody. As I see, you bring jobs back to America, you put Absolutely. more people back to work. Income tax grows, sales tax grows. It'd be nice to see other uh, uh, suppliers or other companies join in this and make this a national uh, program. Much more, you know, with Walmart getting the initiative to get it started. We'll be interesting to see if some of the others jump in there because obviously if, if things are being made in America, Target's going to benefit, Kohl's going to Absolutely. benefit, Toys R Us will benefit. All of them have a reason to do that. Now, the downside could obviously be if, if prices truly are higher because they're, they're sourcing it here, Does that can that impact Walmart if Target continues to outsource, or other retailers rather, continue to outsource to China or other countries? Could we see some, some EDLC erosion here? Uh, I mean, I, th I suppose it's possible, but many of the markets are seeing in wage inflation, the Chinas, the Vietnams, the India, and plus you have the longer lead time uh, for in terms of responsiveness. If you have a hot item and it's made in the, in the U.S., you're going to be able to get more of those a lot faster than if it's made in China or, or Which is someplace. 90 days on the water plus clearing customs, right. so you're looking exactly. four months out. Exactly. Yeah, I think it'll vary by category for sure. And then I don't know that the overseas sourcing will just completely go away. So I don't know if it's an either or, if it may be an and approach for a lot of companies. Okay, it'll be interesting to see how this turns out. Final thing, we have about a minute left here. Um, Walmart's going to be stepping up some of their standards, compliance for suppliers in China. Some of the Chinese uh, or Chinese television reported there were some lax standards. Do you see that coming to the U.S. as well and really impacting suppliers globally? I think so. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, the bigger Walmart becomes, the more dependent they become on ensuring that their supply base is is good. They can't afford to have recalls. They can't afford the, bu the bad publicity hits them. And uh, uh, the, the challenge they have is they put pressure on suppliers for cost, and that can tend to, to lead people to maybe want to provide uh, less quality 
Uh, so you take that risk. Are you, you know, is there a value balance here uh, that makes more sense for Walmart? Okay, final word real quick. Best suppliers will figure out how to balance compliance and cost and have a transparent uh, conversation with Walmart about it. All right, guys, thank you very much. Stay tuned because when we come back, we're going to sit down with Matt Pfeiffer. He's the founder of Store Other Community, give you some ideas on what you can do to help drive sales at Walmart. All coming up when Saturday morning meeting continues. K Stack, the leader in collaborative retail consolidation programs. We offer the supply chain expertise needed to navigate the challenges of selling products with the world's largest retailers. And we provide customers with a customizable, scalable, environmentally sustainable supply chain with the same advanced technology typically used by larger rivals. By leveling the playing field, K Stack lowers distribution costs and increases overall margins. K Stack, retail logistics is what we do. GigWalk is an on-demand mobile workforce that can collect data and do work at retail. Businesses use GigWalk for retail audits, merchandising, and much more. With 350,000 smartphone-enabled workers available on-demand, you get unprecedented speed and coverage across the U.S., Canada, and the U.K. And all work is reviewed for quality and accuracy. Visit GigWalk.com to learn more. Everyone visualizes how amazing it would be to be an Olympian. It's the kind of thing you've dreamed about your entire life. When the Olympics come around, anything can happen. You try to go as big as you can. You have to be inspired. You have to be motivated. I'm going to be ready to go for Sochi. I am so excited to be headed to the 2014 Sochi Olympic Winter Games, bringing you exclusive coverage and representing Northwest Arkansas. It all begins February 6th, right here on KNWA. When the weather changes, your life changes. And that's why we're always tracking and monitoring the weather. And when it does get bad, we'll let you know about it, protecting the people that you care about. Northwest Arkansas's weather can change in a moment's notice. So when it does become severe, we'll be on air and online with your family safety as our number one priority. Dan Scoff, Gina DeVecchio, and Clint Boone. The meteorologists of the Northwest Arkansas Weather Authority, proudly serving Northwest Arkansas. If you notice, we're called the Razorback Nation. Razorback Razor. Nation. Razor. We eat, drink, and breathe Razorbacks. Aaron Peters, Alyssa Orange, Chris Fry, and Mike Irwin. If it's Razorback Sports, you're going to find it here. Nobody covers the hogs like we do. The Razorback Nation. Your one source for Razorback sports. It's the state's largest sports team, the Razorback Nation. Welcome back to Saturday Morning Medium. We are joined now by Matt Pfeiffer, the CEO and co-founder of Store of the Community. And you've been kind of busy over your career, some time at Walmart. Let's talk a little bit about that. Sure. Yeah, so I spent uh, about 13 years at Walmart, most of that time, about five years, I guess, in the field, both uh, Walmart and Sam's Club. And I moved to the office uh, in 1998 kind of did the home office rotation through people, marketing, and uh, ended my career in 2005 with an expat assignment uh, working for Walmart in Tokyo. And marketing really kind of got you into what, what we're going to talk about today, which is store the community. Now, when as a supplier, when I hear store the community, I'm thinking about store, store the community reports that I'm running in Retail Inc. I'm talking sure. about modulars. I'm talking about um, different clustering and what stores are, are really traded for my product. But you kind of take a little different spin on the whole store of the community uh, sure. part of it. Yeah, so for us as a marketing company, it really is about understanding what is going on within specific communities. And so whether it's a local golf tournament, whether it is uh, Major League Baseball spring training, you know, what is it that is on the consumer's mind when they're shopping in those particular stores? What's going on in those communities? And how can we help suppliers take advantage of those opportunities to create excitement at the stores in a way that resonates with those consumers? And, and most importantly, or perhaps as importantly, uh, also gets the store managers excited about about participating. Kind of like the golf tournament that comes to Northwest Arkansas, the PNG Open and PNG Classic that's here, uh, the LPGA event uh, in September. Those type of events are what you're, what you're looking to cover and that's, do. That's exactly right. So we've got visibility to uh, an enormous database of events that are taking place all over the country. And what we're able to do is look at, on a department, a category, and an item basis, and understand historically. Uh, what takes place inside a store when, when a golf tournament comes to town or when a rodeo comes to town. And so for us, it's about looking at 
other communities across the country, understanding what's happened historically, and then we can build programs that support specific suppliers because we know that those consumers are going to have those products on their mind when those events take place. So how is this different from hiring a demo company to come out and do some demos in the store or a club, because this is Sam's Club sure. as well. So how, what sets you apart and how? what's the point of difference here? Sure. Well, well I think there's three things that really set us apart. One is, is really that, uh, that, that laser focus on specific communities. It's not, we don't typically design programs that would, would execute exactly the same way in, in two or 3,000 stores at a time. It really is about understanding what's unique about that store, what's unique about that community, what's taking place in the community, and having a laser focus to develop those events and promotions that are going to resonate with those consumers. The second thing is having grown up inside Walmart, both in the field and at the office, uh, having managed uh, programs at store level, having managed programs on Walmart's marketing team, uh, we know very well how to get things done at a Walmart store. And I think that's where a lot of the, the agencies uh, that do brilliant work creatively fall apart is they don't really understand uh, when, a, when a store manager says yes, uh, maybe they're not always saying yes, or maybe they don't know exactly what they're saying yes to. And so we put a real emphasis on uh, you know, store level execution, getting things done at the store. And then the third thing is it's all about return on investment. And so I think impressions are important. I think that driving trial is important, but for us it's all about, uh, in, in some cases it's about helping our customers get incremental display on the sales floor. And so they're able to use that incremental display as a way to pay for what we do and drive that immediate, measurable, uh, predictable and dependable return on investment. And this is not about going around the buyer. Certainly no, you guys are not. working with the buyer, suppliers are working with the buyer. Uh, but one of the things that uh, whenever I go to a buyer and present out some plans that we want to do for next year, uh, it may be a great thought out, well prepared plan, the problem becomes store execution. In fact, yes. Walmart's got a whole team uh, working with store execution. Nothing against Walmart, but when you've got 4,000 stores, 4,000 different store managers, probably 12,000 different assistant managers, obviously, obviously things get a little uh, missed and dropped. Yes. You have the ability to kind of cut through all that. Yeah, and I'm glad you said what you said. I mean, this is absolutely not about trying to sidestep uh, the, the, the marketers, the merchants. Absolutely not. This is recognizing that the store manager still has tremendous autonomy in their store to support programs that fit within strict and specific guidelines provided by the home office. Uh, but we have got an ability that, that Walmart's marketing team would not have to look one store at a time and develop programs that are not just going to create excitement on, uh, in, a, in a general sense, but are going to create excitement at those stores in a very specific sense because they're very closely tied to what's taking place in the community. Uh, I, interesting thing that I learned when I was at Walmart, bike rallies. We have bikes, there's a barbecue here. Yes. Sturgis, obviously, a big one in, uh, in South Dakota. One thing you don't typically think about on bike rallies are sleeping bags. Yes. Intense. Yes. And having the, the ability to dispose of those quickly. That's right. Yeah. And so, and so again, we've got a database that has compiled uh, information that's closely tied to, to each one of the. There are hundreds and hundreds of bike rallies that take place across the country every year, and so we're able to do some predictive uh, analysis based on the categories and the items that pop when a typical bike rally would come to town. Okay. You're exactly we're gonna, right. We're going to take a break real quick, and when we come back, we'll talk more about uh, some of those specialized events, but also retail retailtainment and what that can mean to Walmart as well as suppliers. All of that coming up as we continue our conversation with Matt Pfeiffer, the CEO and founder of Store of the Community, as Saturday morning meeting continues. At 906 in Bentonville, do you know where your reps are? You could, and you should. Introducing MV Retail, the smart device driven dashboard providing, you need to know the truth and you need to know it now, team management system. Visit us online to learn more because in the world of retail, wondering is bad, but knowing is good. At Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art, we can help your business meetings get out of the box. Way, way out of the box. With refreshing views of the museum's 120-acre grounds, breathtaking architecture, spacious meeting and presentation venues, and top-notch catering from Eleven, our award-winning restaurant, not to mention more than 400 works of art by American masters. Your meeting at Crystal Bridges will be anything but in the box. Call us today and let our team of professional event planners arrange your next meeting at Crystal Bridges Museum of American art.
2014 Sochi Olympics begin February 6th here on KNWA. Don't miss a minute of our exclusive coverage as I travel to Russia to bring you the Olympics. When the weather changes, your life changes. And that's why we're always tracking and monitoring the weather. And when it does get bad, we'll let you know about it, protecting the people that you care about. Northwest Arkansas's weather can change in a moment's notice. So when it does become severe, we'll be on air and online with your family safety as our number one priority. Dan Scoff, Gina DeVecchio, and Clint Boone, the meteorologists of the Northwest Arkansas Weather Authority, proudly serving Northwest Arkansas. If you notice, we're called the Razorback Nation. Razorback Nation. We eat, drink, and breathe Razorbacks. Aaron Peters, Alyssa Orange, Chris Fry, and Mike Irwin. If it's Razorback Sports, you're going to find it here. Nobody covers the hogs like we do. The Razorback Nation. Your one source for Razorback Sports. It's the state's largest sports team. The Razorback Nation. And welcome back to Saturday Morning Meeting. We are continuing our conversation with Matt Pfeiffer, the CEO and founder of Store the Community. And before we went to break, we were talking about retailtainment, particularly some of those bike rallies, bikes, blues, and barbecue, obviously a big one here in Northwest Arkansas. But it's not just about the big bike rally and things that there's a, so many more things that come into that. The suppliers may or may not be aware of. Sure. And certainly the stores need to be aware of. And let's talk a little bit about retailtainment and how Store the Community can, can kind of help with that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, again, uh, we spend a fair amount of time working with suppliers on campaigns that would, would execute over hundreds, if not thousands of stores, but where you know, our, the sweet spot for us is really direct engagement at the store level, helping the store manager have um, uh, you know, that, that panoramic view, if, if you will, of, of their community, help them do their 30, 60, 90 day planning by understanding very well what's happening within their community. And then uh, by way of developing these, these promotions at store level, then bringing on the supplier support. I'll tell you that, um, you know, we've talked about this before, that the pendulum has kind of swung back and forth a little bit, particularly over the last seven or eight years. When we started our business back in 2005, it was just after I left Walmart, and we placed almost all of our emphasis on parking lot events. I mean, almost everything at that time that we did was on the parking lot of a Walmart store. 2007, we get a, a you know a memorandum from Walmart saying no more parking lot events. And um, that's when Project Impact came. Well, in it was just right on reducing, the front side. Yeah, and then the and then so then Project Impact and the Clean Store Initiative came, and, and there was this decluttering of the, of the Walmart stores, and so you you saw retail tainment didn't go completely away. I'll tell you, and I spoke to you about this earlier. The DSD suppliers, in particular, which is direct store delivery, direct store delivery. Those, so those your, Coke your Coca Colas, your 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 Miller Coors, et cetera, they have always been the best when it comes to. Uh, retail attainment. They're the most engaged at the store level. Uh, their programs are typically the executed the best uh, of them all. And I'll tell you that even during that decluttering of the Walmart stores, you, saw, you still saw a lot of those programs taking place. And uh, that's where we kind of got our start is with those DSD suppliers and so mm -hmm. our business stayed healthy. But I'll tell you that over the last couple of years and particularly in the last year, you're starting to see an increased emphasis on retail attainment again. And I would say it's probably at, at the highest level that it's been, at least in the last 10 years that I've been watching it fairly closely. Uh, and there is a significant emphasis being placed back on uh, new store grand openings. And those are always a big deal. I mean, I was in store planning seven years domestic internationally, and the more events that we had on the parking lot and in the store that created that excitement obviously the better our sales were gonna be during right. the grand opening. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I think there's a lot of, been a lot of research done over the years that shows that if a consumer is, is having a good time, or at least not having a bad time uh, when they're in the stores. And, uh, you know, Bob Conley used to always talk about the nag factor. I mean, it's why there's candy at the, at the registers, because the kid's like, mom, can I have this? Mom, can I have this? Uh, you've got the nag factor. And if, if the kids are happy and, and, and mom and dad are happy and, and, and not hating their shopping experience, they're gonna stay there longer. And if they stay there longer, they're gonna spend more money. And so. You know, retail attainment cannot be viewed as a, a check mark, something that a supplier gets as part of a, you know, an overall marketing plan for a new brand or, or, or what have you. It really is all about creating that fun and festive shopping environment that Walmart has historically been so well known for right. that gets a consumer to come because they know it's fun, stay longer because they're having a good time, and, and more items just happen to go in the basket as a well, direct and let's, result. Let's talk about what some of the things that you do because I'm a small regional supplier, sure. so I may not have the budget that a P&G has to be able to to go out and do some really big retail attainment event. But there are some things that you can do in terms of bringing suppliers together to kind of share some of that cost, which makes it very affordable for the smaller suppliers yeah. to get their product in, that may have just gotten their product in. Sure. Uh, or the big ones, 
you just co opt and do that together. Let's talk a little sure. bit about that. Well, I'll give you one great example. We worked with a, uh, a video game uh, su supplier last year, uh, one, of, one of the biggest. Uh, and they had uh, what was the, the fifth largest video game launch of, of the year. But they didn't have a lot of funding to put against it themselves. And so what they charged us with was go and find us a couple of partners. Uh, and so we did. We brought in a, a beverage company. We brought in uh, another CPG company that funded the lion's share of the program, secured for both of those companies incremental display space. And as a result of the program and the attention that we drew, not only to the, to the product but to the category more broadly, we grew that business year over year by 125%, not 25%, not double and 25%. So, uh, you know, again, that program, I won't give you the specifics of it, I guess, but it's really more about driving attention to the category, driving attention to the title, and bringing people nose to nose uh, with that product in the store. So even if the budget's not that big, you've got to be able to partner and you can pair those people, pair those different suppliers that's up. Right. Because at the end of the day, there are a couple things that, as a supplier, I got to drive sales, not just sure. for my company, but also for Walmart, because sure. the more I drive for Walmart, the more of a bigger supplier I get to become. Yes. But not just in terms of volume, but in terms of partnership. And that's really what this is all about, is developing those partnerships to make sure that that's right. everybody wins. And it doesn't hurt that we, you know, we did not follow the gold rush to Northwest Arkansas trying to capitalize on Walmart and these 1,250 supplier teams being here. We've grown up here. We understand the business very well. And we're an EDLC operation. So, you know, we are very, very creative in building programs that uh, are, are really easy to stomach financially because there's not a lot of fluff that's built into them. Okay, Matt, thank you very much. Thank you. Founder, CEO of Store of the Community. And we will be right back as Saturday Morning Meeting continues. Bentonville Plaza, across the street from the Walmart home office. The best office location for businesses working with the world's largest retailer. Bentonville Plaza offers proximity and services like no other business complex in the area, including custom designed suites and an on-site fitness center and restaurant. Pre-leasing opportunities are currently available for new construction. Call 479-200-1112 today. Stay tuned to KNWA because I'm headed to Sochi for the 2014 Olympic Winter Games. You won't want to miss any of our exclusive coverage from Russia. It all starts right here on KNWA February 6th. When the weather changes, your life changes. And that's why we're always tracking and monitoring the weather. And when it does get bad, we'll let you know about it, protecting the people that you care about. Northwest Arkansas's weather can change in a moment's notice. So when it does become severe, we'll be on air and online with your family safety as our number one priority. Dan Scoff, Gina DeVecchio, and Clint Boone, the meteorologists of the Northwest Arkansas Weather Authority, proudly serving Northwest Arkansas. If you notice, we're called the Razorback Nation. Razorback Razor. Nation. Razor. We eat, drink, and breathe Razorback. Aaron Peters, Alyssa Orange, Chris Fry, and Mike Irwin. If it's Razorback Sports, you're going to find it here. Nobody covers the hogs like we do. The Razorback Nation. You're one source for Razorback Sports. It's the state's largest sports team, the Razorback Nation. Everyone visualizes how amazing it would be to be an Olympian. It's the kind of thing you've dreamed about your entire life. When the Olympics come around, anything can happen. You try to go as big as you can. You have to be inspired. You have to be motivated. I'm going to be ready to go for Sochi. I am so excited to be headed to the 2014 Sochi Olympic Winter Games, bringing you exclusive coverage and representing Northwest Arkansas. It all begins February 6th, right here on KNWA. Thanks to our guests for joining us this week, and thank you for taking the time to join us. Please join us next week when our featured guest will be John O'Leary of Rising Above. John knows firsthand how to be a victor in the face of life's most staggering difficulties. And during the Olympics, Saturday morning meeting will begin two minutes earlier than usual at 6.28 p.m. We'll see you next Saturday.